Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about the design philosophies. That is the methods we are using to design an RCC member. So a RCC member is designed based on these three methods. The first one is working stress method. Second is ultimate load method. And the third one is limit skate method. Coming to the first one, the working stress method, it is based on the elastic theory. That is both steel and concrete behave elastically. So here that is the basic assumption we are taking. The variation of stress is linear, which is not true. This method of design is based on permissible stresses in concrete and steel are not exceeding anywhere. Uh, here the factor of safety doesn't predict the two, true margin of safety. And uh, we are assuming that the failure criteria assumed is stress, but strain criteria is the reliable one. Okay. And here we are also ignoring the effect of creep and shrinkage. The sections are designed as per elastic theory of bending, assuming both materials, that is the steel and concrete, obeys Hooke's law. And we are taking the permissible stress is equal to yield stress by factor of safety. So in this working stress method, we are taking the factor of safety for steel as 1.79 and for concrete it is 3. Okay. But the main disadvantage of this method is, uh, this yields very uneconomical sections. In this working stress method, the structural members are designed for working loads, such that the stresses developed are within the allowable stresses. Hence, we are taking the failure criteria as the stress. Okay, we are assuming the strain and criteria also is the reliable one. Accounts for any uncertainties in estimation of working loads and variation in material properties. Whenever we are taking any material, we are selecting the material, there might be some uh, uh, variation from the required one or maybe any uncertainty is taking place. So we are also taking that into consideration and we are have a, taking this as the factor of safety for steel and concrete. So the stress strain curve of concrete is linear in this case. We are assuming that as linear from zero, from zero at the neutral axis to maximum value at the extreme fiber. So in working stress method, we are taking the stress strain curve of concrete as linear from zero at the neutral axis to a maximum value at the extreme fiber. So even in spite of this uh, above defects, the working stress method uh, is having some advantage of its simplicity, uh, both in concept as well as in application. The design usually results in relatively large sections of structural members compared to limit skate method. Due to this, the structures designed by working stress method gives us better serviceability performance. So in case where the serviceability is main criteria of the design, we will be choosing this working stress method. However, this method has been deleted from IS 456. Uh, but the concept of this method is retained for checking the serviceability skates of deflections and cracking. Hence, the knowledge of this method is very essential and IS 456 is very important which, gives, which is given in the appendix part. Next, we do have ultimate load method. In this ultimate load method, the stress condition at the state of impending collapse of the structure is analyzed. So in, in this method, the structural elements are designed for ultimate loads, which are obtained by multiplying the working load with a factor known as load factor. Okay, we are multiplying the working loads with a factor called as load factor. The concept of modular ratio is avoided in this method. Uh, the modular ratio is nothing but the ratio of the modulus of elasticity of steel to the modulus of elasticity of concrete that is ES by EC where EC as per the IS 456-2000 is 5000 root, 5, root FCK where FCK is nothing but the characteristic compressive strength of concrete okay if M20 is taken the FCK is 20 okay that is in Newton per mm square the safety measure is introduced in the design as load factor is given in this so in this method we are having a load factor that is we are just multiplying the working loads with some factor we are overestimating the loads in this case next what is the working load the working load is increased by a factor that is load factor that is 1.5 to obtain the ultimate load so this method takes into account of the non-linear behavior of stress in concrete so in that case, we were taking the strain criteria is reliable and the failure criteria is stress. But here we are also taking the non-linear behavior of the stress.
So hence in this method the designer can is able to predict the excess load the structure can carry beyond the working loads without any collapse. So we are just taking the factor of safety into consideration just to ensure the structure is taken safely without any collapse even the ultimate loads. So hence in this method we are taking the true margin of safety. This method considers the actual stress strain curve of concrete and the failure criteria is assumed as ultimate strain. That is why this method gives very economical sections. However, it leads to excess deformations and cracking. So in this case, it is failing to satisfy the serviceability and durability requirements. So to overcome these drawbacks, the limit skate method has been developed to take care of both strength and serviceability requirements. So in the first case, the serviceability conditions were good. But in second method, the strength considerations are good, but serviceability requirements are not yet up to the mark. So we are just developing a third method, which is developed considering both the strength and serviceability requirements. That is the limit skate method. This is the third method we were talking about. The acceptable limits of safety and serviceability requirements before failure occurs is called as a limit skate. Okay, we are just considering the acceptable limits of considering both safety and serviceability requirements. This method is based on concept of, of safety at ultimate load and serviceability at working load. So, in this method, the structure shall be designed to withstand safety, safely all loads liable to act on it throughout its life. So, we are also considering the serviceability requirements such as limitations on deflection and cracking. The acceptable limit for safety and serviceability requirements before failure occurs is called as limit skate as already discussed. Okay. So a limit skate is a skate of impending failure beyond which a structure ceases to perform its intended function satisfactorily in terms of either safety or serviceability. So all relevant limit skates shall be considered in design to ensure an adequate degree of safety and serviceability is provided. In general, the structure shall be designed on the basis of most critical limit state. That is, it shall be checked for all other limit skates, taking into consideration the most dangerous combinations of loads. So in limit skate design, we are designing based on the characteristic values of materials for both material and strengths, also with the consideration of applied loads. Which, taken, which take into account the variations in material strengths and in loads to be supported. The characteristic value should be based on statistical data if available. Where such data are not available, they should be based on experience. Okay, The design values are derived from the characteristic values through the use of partial safety factors. One for material strengths and other for the loads. So we are also considering the loads along with the materials. So we are seeing the classification of this. In the limit skate method, we are having limit skate of serviceability and limit skate of collapse. Okay, whereas limit skate of collapse considers, involves the limit skate of flexure, that is bending, limit skate of shear, limit skate of bond. And in serviceability, we are talking about the life of the structure. That is deflection, crack, vibration. This is nothing but the long term life. We are discussing about the long term life of the structure. And in this part, we are just talking about some limit skates during its collapse. Okay. So this is the classification of this. That is it for this video guys. If you like the video, please like, share and comment to the channel. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Your subscription would greatly help me. I appreciate you watching this video. Thank you.